Hey everyone and welcome to I'm Recruitable TV where you get the unfiltered, no BS information and advice on college sports recruitment. I'm your host, Tarek Merchant. Along with me is my sidekick, John Sklenar. What's up, John? What's going on, Tarek? How's your day? Not too much. Busy day today. Busy in day, the busy day. Lots going on. Colleges are opening up, which is great. And yep. hopefully recruiting can get back to normal sooner than later. But uh, today we are talking about how recruiting really works. This is episode six. This is a big topic for us. Um, you know, I always realize that when I go out and I speak and, you know, I, I find athletes coming into the recruiting uh, time when they're getting ready to uh, start the process that they realize that recruiting is very different than how they initially thought it was. And right. also, so we're going to give you guys some real honest information, advice, as we always do on how it really works and what to really expect out of it. Sounds like a plan. All right, let's get started here. So, um, you know, the, the concept is really important to understand for both the players and, and their families. Um, I find that, you know, too many families are misled. They're misunderstood about this process. Um, and it's an education thing, right? And that's why we're here. We're doing what we do. We know it's all about educating you guys. So you make the right decisions, you get opportunities. But one thing to keep in mind is that there will be, you know, a downside to recruiting as well. Like you, you will not win every opportunity. You will, there will be some, some losses and there'll be some wins. And that's on both sides though. That's what we have to understand is that it's not only the athletes that are, you know, going to be disappointed at times because they, you know, a certain school is not going to be able to recruit them that they had on their dream list, but it's also the coaches because right. a, a coach can only, you know, they're hoping that the athletes they offer opportunities to, they, they select it, but a lot of times they don't and they're going to try to win a couple of them. And for the athlete, you know, there's only one school you can end up going to. So you're going to turn down a bunch of coaches. And, um, you know, that's not always an easy thing to understand is that there is rejection involved and there's also opportunity involved. But that's part of the game. That's part of the business. That's how it works. So um, on both ends. It, yeah, be, exactly. But be ready for it. And it's, right. and it's a lot of fun. Like the process can be can be fun um, right. and it should be fun. So we're going to talk about a few major points that I'll summarize to start with is, you know, we're going to talk about how you can follow the process, um, who initiates the contact, is it the athletes, is it the coaches, um, and then we're going to talk about the roles of the athlete, the parent, and the college coaches. Right. Okay, so let's start off here with number one, follow the process. And, um, you know, it's called the recruiting process for a reason. Ha uh ha -huh. You know, it's, it's a process, which means there are certain steps you need to take and there's certain things that you need to do no matter what. So, you know, every co college and coach has their own process that their university has in place or how the coach has their process of how they go about their recruiting. And it can differ from school to school and coach to coach. So you have to understand what that process is from those coaches and follow what they're asking you to do and understand that certain coaches are going to do things differently and that uh, you got to trust that process that they're taking you down. Right. Um, I think sometimes people try to bypass, right? Like a lot of times people try to bypass this. Like I think one of the things that um, I, I've realized when I go out and speak, especially is I get a lot of questions. And so it's because people see this as a daunting thing. And we don't want athletes and their families to think the recruiting process is super difficult because, you know, I know that sometimes we say that it is because there are aspects of it that are, but it's not so difficult that you can't do. It only becomes difficult when you're not educated. It becomes difficult when you don't actually do the process. It becomes difficult when you don't try to understand it and you try to take shortcuts and what you end up doing is just going in circles and wasting time. So, you know, a lot, a lot of, sorry to uh, cut you off there, but I know you have a lot to say about it. Um, a lot of that is also done when people start like at a later stage in the recruiting, right? 
when they start scrambling and kind of aren't educated and they're kind of trying to jump the gun and do this. So there's always, you know, when we talk about the timeline, time frame of, you know, the recruiting process, it should be, you know, started at a earlier age rather than a later. And that way you have that time to do it properly. And, you know, you won't be scrambling in, in the end and you'll have, you know, narrow down some schools that you can actually choose from. Right. That is, um, you know, that, that is one of the, the, the things that happen sometimes is that they, you know, the families tend to start to, yeah, scramble and then they try finding shortcuts, right? right. So that's one of the reasons. And, I, and you make that really, really good point is a lot of times I'll get people, you know, who are late and going like, okay, what, what am I going to do? What do I need to do now? Because I am, you know, so late. And so the thing is, is yeah, start early. But even if you are late, um, you know, you can't cut corners. No. You know, um, and there's things that you can't avoid, right? Like there's things like, if you got to take the SAT or the ACT, like you got to do the test scores. Like if you, if you actually have to do it, you have to do it. I mean, there are instances when certain colleges don't require you to do it and whatnot, but like, if you got to do it, you got to do it. Don't try to, you know, think otherwise. Like you, you know, you got to have a profile out there. Um, you got to have a video. Some people don't want to show a video because they're like, oh, well, you know, I don't know if I look that great in it, or they don't want to share their stats. And it's like, you just gotta do it because coaches will ask and if they don't get it, they'll have to move on if you're not cooperating. Yeah. And you should never cut corners like you're saying. And, you know, just again, going based off of a timeline, um, you know, again, just start early. I know you're going to get into this uh, in a while, but you know, um, it's like, it's like asking a girl out to the prom, right? You're not going to do it on the day of the prom. If you actually want to, take her to the prom you're probably going to ask a couple of weeks earlier and try to you know get that in before there's you know a possible lineup of guys trying to ask her out so yeah you just got to you know make sure you're following the proper timeline and getting that done good so that's like coming down to you know the most important thing about following the process and uh is a contact communication with coaches so you know the biggest question here number two is do athletes or do coaches initiate that contact? And I think there's a lot of confusion around this and right. nobody really understands what should happen, how it works, because um, really it's, you know, in a perfect world, coaches would want athletes to all contact them. And in a perfect world for athletes, they'd want all the coaches contacting them. But the reality is it's a two way street. And it has to happen on both sides. So like you were saying about the prom, um, you know, I've made parallels to recruiting to help families understand it better. So right. for parents, I often say it's like searching for a job or hiring somebody. And that means like you're like the coach. Right. And if you're searching, you're the athlete, you know, looking for a job. And it, it is very similar to recruiting and how that process works and and the the concept behind it and then you know for athletes i like to have some fun and talk about it like dating which actually everyone can relate to as well and maybe people can relate to dating the best because you know athletes and stuff even at a younger age you you have this you know attraction and stuff and so you're going through those adolescence and those stages so i wanted to you know go through a fun scenario with you john and just run it through as if okay. you know, we're dating, right? Not, not me and you, but as if we're talking about dating. Right. Okay. Um, so I made a couple notes here because uh, I remember I've talked it out a few times, but let's just say that I'm the athlete and I'm a boy because I am. So this can work either way. Um, and then let's use the coach as the girl. Right. And so, you know, if I'm asking a girl out, then I got to wait to see if there's interest, right? So I might ask a girl out in many different ways nowadays, like in a lot of it's online through text or email or whatever it is, DMing somebody. So I'm, you know, trying to seek interest. Hey, how's it going? I'm trying to have a conversation with someone, basically telling them, you know, I kind of want, I want to get to know you. I'm interested in you. There's right. something about you that attracted me to you, right? To want to learn more. And then that girl you know, uh, there's different options she has to give back to me, right? She could completely ignore me, 
She could tell me she's not interested to have a relationship with me or even get to know me. She could tell me that she's very interested. She could be hesitant as well. And so there's different scenarios or different options that could happen from that results. And from there, I have to be able to react. So if she ignores me, it could be that maybe she didn't even receive my message, right? Possibly. Realize. And so if that's the case, I might hit her up again and be like, hey, you know, I sent you a message or I wanted to see if you want to go out, you know, for lunch or whatever. And um, that could happen. And maybe she just missed it. Or maybe she would eventually then tell me, look, you know, I have a boyfriend or I'm not interested. And in that case, okay. Um, I have two options there. Well, if they have a boyfriend, you let them go. But if she doesn't, then, you know, maybe I have to be a little more persistent in certain things. Like, hey, maybe like we have similar interests. Like, I think you might, you know, enjoy hanging out with me and not putting too much pressure on, but you've obviously realized by looking at her that there may be interest. Or it could be like we said, um, you know, she's very interested and then there's a good opportunity to get to know each other and somewhat interested, then it's your chance to, you know, sell yourself, market yourself, make hope, hoping that there is that connection. Right. And so I hope people can get what I'm, what I'm trying to say here is that that is exactly like an athlete going out to a coach and saying, hey, I'm interested in your school because they looked it up. I've maybe seen your team play or whatnot, and I have interest. Or, and I think I have these right stats that can match up. And, you know, coaches are going to have different reactions for different reasons. And then you have to decide which, you know, uh, way you go. If there's no interest, you know, unfortunately, that's not an option. You move on. If there is interest, then you talk to them. They also might wait. You know, it doesn't mean that they don't have interest, but they could just be waiting for the right time to reach back to you. So it's with a dating situation or also uh, like with recruiting, right? So when you're, when a coach shows or when you're showing interest towards a coach, if you don't hear anything back within a couple of days, it doesn't mean they don't have interest. They might have not even checked their email by that time, right? That's right. They have specific time slots, you know, they're busy as well. You know, they have their own schedule throughout the week. You know, they might do every Thursday, every Friday, check the emails and then, you know, go from there. And then they select their specific times that they'll start contacting recruits depending on which grad year as well. Right. So. Yeah. I mean, like uh, in, in the parallel to dating, there is that not everybody's ready for a relationship right away or to go out. Maybe they just got out of a relationship. Maybe they're busy because of their specific timeline, the same way with recruiting. Maybe the coach isn't ready to start their recruiting for your grad year yet. Maybe they are, maybe they already have a bunch of prospects and they don't want to put any more on the list. Right. Like, so you make good points there and and I'll, I'll throw a couple more things out there that I think are important to understand is like, you know, you also have to see, you know, what, what market you have like demand, right? There is. So, so let's just say that, you know, I, you know, happen to have, you know, the gir- a girl that I'm reaching out to happens to just have a lot of interest from a number of different guys that would love to go out on a date with her. Well, you know, now she's got options. So, you know, she's gonna maybe not give certain people as much love as other people because of the options that she has. And in the recruiting world, you know, if the coach is getting a lot of interest from, you know, the, the, the average player, let's say that can join their team, and you happen to fit to be, you know, the average player that they could recruit, well, then they may spend more of their time trying to get the top athlete and knowing that the other athletes are coming to them, you know? So you just have to jump on that train as well and understand that, you know, they're going to give you time and attention because they need to, if they want to recruit players, but they're also going to be initiating more contact with the higher players because those are the ones that aren't initiating contact with them. Right. And so that needs to be understood as well is that, you know, if you're a top prospect, like maybe they're going to come to you and then that's when the coach is initiating, but otherwise there will be scenarios where you have to initiate. And I think that that is the concept that sometimes is a bitter pill to swallow is we're always hoping that the coaches, because, you know, that's their job. Like I remember one time a dad asked me at an event, he said, he was really frustrated how none of these coaches are coming up to my daughter. Like I thought I've been watching college basketball and all this stuff. And I see all those people get recruited. It's like you watch those movies, you watch 
ESPN and stuff, and you see those top athletes and how those coaches are making home visits and scouting them and recruiting them. But again, that's the reality for a smaller group of people. The right. majority of the way it works is that the athlete is going out to the coach because the coach also has a lot of interest and you shouldn't wait. Right. So John, you always say it, it's a two way street, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's a two way street. So even, um, you know, referring to online platforms, um, you know, such as I'm recruitable as well. If you have one of these platforms and you see, uh, you know, interest coach activity, you know, stuff happening where you see interest from coaches, you have to reach out to those coaches if there's mutual interest. If I have a school showing that they viewed my profile or I fell under one of their searches, you know, I, I see interest there. Now that coach might just write down a name or might take down my information from the profile, but again, might wait two, three weeks before they actually contact me. They're just setting up their list for, you know, their 2021 fall recruits, let's say. Right. But I shouldn't just be sitting here staring at my computer or my profile and be like, okay, so this school liked me. So I'm just going to wait now until they come back. Cause they're for sure going to come back. Cause they already liked me. It's, it, you know, it can work like that, but you have to take initiative uh, as a student athlete. And if there's mutual interest to some of these schools, coaches showing interest, you have to go back to them and let them know, Hey, I see you showed interest on my profile. You know, I'm interested in your, program as well your school you know can we get on a call can i get a little bit more information and that's how you get the conversation started and and overall i went through the recruiting process you went through the recruiting process coaches ultimately prefer it when the student athlete shows confidence and you know goes after them rather than the other way around yeah yeah you make a good point i mean we're we're in it all the time because of i'm recruitable and those are often the things that John, you're educating a lot of the families on lately is, you know, my daughter got, you know, a bunch of searches, a bunch of profile views, followers, but not a whole lot of coaches, you know, reaching out and saying it's because, yeah, they're making those little jabs, those connections, but, you know, they'll reach out when they're ready and you'll get some, but some you have to do on your own. Like if you fall under a search, like you have to also yeah, say, because there's a lot of athletes out there. I mean, like coaches only have so much time and resources, especially, you know, in the non-revenue sports outside of football and basketball. I mean, it gets pretty difficult when there's hundreds and thousands of athletes out there and you, you know, you can't possibly reach out to everyone. So sometimes it does, as I said earlier, become the place where, you know, the coaches just need to receive rather than always initiate and have to pick who they want to initiate with versus who they're receiving. So like, I want to make that a little bit, probably hammer that home one more time, make clear is that, um, you know, college coaches, if they're receiving a whole bunch of interest from a bunch of players that can fit in the middle of their roster or do certain things for them. And, you know, why do they need to go out and get 10 more of those type of players when they're already content, they're going to go to try to initiate contact with the players that are not initiating contact with them. Right. And that is like super, super important. Yeah. And, and, and you need to stand out as well. So it's like a competition, right? So example, you know, coaches might get on their computer this weekend, you know, they're, they're doing their job, you know, properly. They're doing a little bit early maybe, but they're looking at 2020, one recruit so for next fall okay right now they might just look see what 2021s are available you know on an online platform kind of filter whatever they need to and they might just create their own list of 20 kids okay at least you know they're getting a head start if you're one of those kids you should take initiative if again if there's mutual interest you need to stand out so don't wait three months for the coach to maybe come back to you or after three months say, Hey, I noticed, and you know, you like, you know, my profile a few months back, it's like, you should step in there right away. And that way the coach is probably going to mark you off as, okay, there's mutual interest and they already reached out, you know, so you can kind of climb the ladder. So it's almost like a competition. I'm sure the coach already has, you know, on top of him finding 20 kids, he probably has 50 other kids that are emailing them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So exactly. then you end up being in a pool of a hundred kids and there's only two spots available. 
So how are you going to be one of those two? You have to, you know, again, two way street, you got to stay in communication and, you know, go after it yourself. Yeah. I think that like, it's difficult because like you feel like you've worked really hard and that you deserve a spot. But the reality is that there's a lot of competition and there's a lot of kids that feel the same way. Everybody feels that way, right? So like there there isn't always enough spots for everybody. So the process also requires you to really be driven and put in the work, right? So yeah, when I was getting recruited, I almost like my my top three choices, um, you know, I almost like bug them to a point where if the name Jonathan came out, they're just gonna see my face when they close their eyes it's just like oh that's jonathan that's the only jonathan in the world you right, know right right but you got to kind of like promote yourself like that like you're saying and kind of you know just you know go after it make them realize you're the you're the right recruit to have yeah and so th like i'll say another thing there that uh came up is uh, based on that is that some people are scared to write the coaches and scared to pester them to you know if i can use that word i guess it's like obviously you're not you don't want to be annoying them but annoying coaches is like bothering them 24 7. right there's nothing wrong with being you know in front of them and making sure that they are you know they know who you are like you said and um you know that doesn't mean that you can't follow up and communicate um you can't wait for them. They get busy. Like we talked Especially about earlier <laughs> on, you want them to, like you said, you want them to remember you. Right. So if they yeah. like, I know coaches that literally have a hundred, 200 emails come in a week. Right. So if there's a Jonathan, okay, which Jonathan, there's probably like 20 Jonathans that have emailed this coach in the last two months. So it's like, you need to, or if it was me, I need to stick out some how to be like, okay, that's the Jonathan, you know? Right. So, yeah. Or if you're me, you just type your name and probably going to be one of me. Yeah, one of <laughs> there's, actually, there's actually a double me, by the way. There's a guy in London who's actually a pretty popular actor and stuff who has exactly the same name, spells the same way, but thank God he's not an athlete. But uh, yeah, stick out, guys. Put your name out there. It's important. You're not going to bother coaches uh, and just use your judgment. Don't hit them up all day, every day, but... You know, if you haven't heard, 72 hours, whatever it is, make sure you reach, you reach out. All right. So then that that's a great intro into the athlete's role, right? So what is actually the athlete's role, John? What do you? Well, athlete's role, I mean, you know, you can go down a list, right? Um, Got to understand the proper timelines. Uh, communication. You know, always communicate frequently with the college coaches as we, you know, constantly discuss. You got to stay in front of them. You know, you got to just make sure they know your interest and your involvement. Um, so always keep the conversation open as well, you know. So, you know, as a student athlete, you might have, you know, a lot of coaches or interest from different coaches. And when it comes down to, you know, being in the senior year, you're trying to crunch down and narrow down your choices. But, you know, so you should always just keep your conversation open with the coaches because you might go back to a school that you, you know, might have didn't really like or for whatever reason. And then all of a sudden the interest pops up again. Right. Okay. It happened to me as well. Um, creating online profiles, right? So I'm recruitable, other online profiles. It's, you don't want to cut yourself short. Okay. Uh, you're just, if you don't have an online profile in this day and age, you're cutting your opportunity short. Okay, just 100%. It's a lot of things are done digital right now. Coaches are using platforms, you know, student athletes are doing their profiles, and there's a lot of, you know, communication and connections being made that way. So even if you might be, you know, obviously, because of COVID, hopefully that ends soon, and you know, things might open up like collegiate camps or showcases, even if you're going to these events, and coaches are still showing up, they're also going on online profiles. And viewing recruits okay yeah it's like their easiest way to initially discover athletes to begin with because the events only happen certain times they're not just going to wait for those events to happen they you know the ideal way is to connect with coaches online first right and then spend more time with them at the events that's really the ideal way like I'm not saying you can't go to an event and get discovered. Certainly you can for the people that haven't discovered you, but if you had it your way, you'd want to 
connect with coaches online right. and, and further the relationship or further the interest on both sides through events because that, you know, and, and don't, so a lot of people try to do that one way or the other. You got to do everything. Like you said, John. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think for me, the biggest thing that we preach at I'm recruitable and that I've always been about, um, and I wanted this company to, to have this approach was the athlete should and must be in charge of their recruitment process. And right. so, you know, if you want the right results, if you want to be truly happy and comfortable with the choice that you make, right, then, you know, you have to make sure that you are involved to the highest level with the process that you're the front runner, that it, you're in charge of this. You are, are in, you know, it's, you need to be, you're going to be empowered, you know, to do this by the people who can help you, the support team that you have, they should empower you yeah. to take charge and commit yourself to it. And you need to make sure that you, like we just saw today, a, a great video from Dion Sanders, who was talking about the commitment and how much effort it takes to get to the highest level. Well, this is part of it, right? So if you really want to be a college athlete and have a great experience and be the best student you can be and the best athlete you can be and have the best experience and build a network, then how can you do that if you weren't the one figuring out which school is right for you? Leaving it in someone else's hands is not going to get you the results you want. They're going to know what they want, but you're your own person. And that goes for like, you know, everybody, um, no matter what situation you're in. Yeah. Well, you're going somewhere for four years, right? So it's, it's, it's like an investment, right? It's a huge investment for me. I say it's four years for the rest of your life, you know, exactly. because this is the biggest decision you're going to have to make like at, you know, at this age and the next biggest decision you might make is getting married or buying a home or, you know, things like that. But this is your first big decision. Like yeah, it's not just a weekend thing. It's a four year rest of your life. Like you're saying it's, it's like, I mean, you can use different scenarios, right? It's like, it's like buying a pair of skis, right? So a pair of skis should last you what, like I have a pair of skis that I've had them for over 10 years now. Right. But you know, you're going to go try out different pairs. You're going to see which ones work for you best because you're going to be using them for a long period of time. So it's the same. You're going to be going to school for a long period of time. You don't just want to, you know, not know exactly what you're getting into and it's just your sport, but you don't know everything else about the school. So one of the things also want to mention is you need to learn everything. So do your research, learn everything about certain athletic programs, colleges, uh, academic programs, departments, uh, campuses, cafeterias. It's, it's like the whole, the whole package, right? Yeah. Coaches want to get to know athletes. Athlete want to, wants to get to know coaches, their possible potential teammates, the university. And like you said, with the, in the skis, it's like no one else is going to try on the skis for you. So why are you trying to get people to do the process for you? No one's going to use the skis you. for you. You're the one using the skis. Yeah, exactly. So like you're you your own. Be comfortable best. using the skis. You're your own best <laughs> doctor. People always say that. You're your right. own best doctor. Plus you're going to be in those shoes. So like why should someone else be figuring out where you should be going for four years if you're the one who's going to end up going and should be having a good time? Otherwise, you may be miserable. And like I think that could help stop some transfers, um, you know, at times. And it could, it helps you make the right decision. Like how can you possibly make a decision if you weren't the one that was fully invested, right? Like right. I mean, think about if parents, you know, even that if you're listening in, it's like, if you're not fully invested in the job you're doing, or if you're running a company like myself, like if I don't know what's going on, I can't make proper decisions. It's impossible. No, you might get input. So like on a, on a parent standpoint, like if you're buying a home, you might ask your kids, like, what do they think and get their input. But at the end of the day, like the parents are buying the home right. for a long period of time. Right. So it's kind of the same, like the parents should be there supporting, helping out as much as they can. Uh, but, but you, but let the student athlete take control and let them make, you know, the decisions. Cause at the end of the day, we see it all the time. The right decision is made by the student athlete and they end up you know, going somewhere where they're happy they chose. Yeah. So athletes, it takes hard work, dedication, and you got to execute. 
and um, engage, stay engaged with coaches. Coaches won't again. Coaches don't always come back after you or go to you initially. So when you start talking with a coach after reaching out or vice versa, stay engaged. Always stay engaged. I get coaches all the time. Um, you know, and I talk with them. I have friends that are coaches, and you know, they lose out on some recruits just because they don't even know where the recruit went. They just disappeared. And then you go talk with the recruit and they're like, oh, yeah, you know, I just didn't. Um, yeah, I think I talked with them like maybe like a month ago. I'm going to reach back out. And it's like, well, you might be late right now because they thought you had no interest, even though, again, it doesn't mean the student athlete doesn't have interest. That's the thing. They just might be shy or whatever the case is, aren't engaging. And, you know, time flies by and the student athlete still might have a lot of interest, but it could be too late at that point because the coach believed there was no interest because they haven't heard from them, and now they're taking on other recruits and they could have filled their roster already. So when you go back, you know, it's a little too late at times. Out of sight, out of mind. Yep. All right, let's talk deeper about the parents' role. So parents, you got to provide the opportunity for your child. That's your job. You're providing them opportunity, so you're going to give them the tools they need to be successful. So you got to understand what type of athlete you have. You know, are they somebody that is comfortable communicating with coaches and aren't shy um, and are very outgoing and you know can make those relationships with ease? Yes or no? If no, you got to find a solution. Get them some help. Teach them some skills. Be their cheerleader. Get them somebody that can help that doesn't mean someone's going to do it for them but you're going to give them help them build those skills up right um make sure that your kid has their profile online everywhere like because there's multiple places to go and there's multiple opportunities you know so like you know you have ranking and rating sites you have recruiting tools like like we have at i'm recruitable and other companies out there like there's events to go to give your kid the opportunity to put their name out online and then give your kid the opportunity if you can to take them to events where they have access to coaches you know in person as well um help them manage their schedule and encourage them and give them confidence so like we talked about um i think it was a couple episodes ago about you know managing their development right um you have to be on top of the management. So if your child is struggling with, like there should not be an excuse, there cannot be an excuse of my child doesn't have time. My child's too busy doing their sport and academics, they don't have time for recruiting. Like, again, are you kidding me? Like we just told you how important this decision is and how important it is for the child to make the right decision. They are turning into young adults and when they go to college, they're on their own. And then you want them to have a great time. So like, you can't give that excuse. I, I, I won't accept it and you shouldn't accept it. Most importantly, because no parent wants nothing, every parent wants nothing but the best for their child, right? And so if you want nothing but the best, you want to do them justice and make sure that they are happy. By doing so, don't do things for them, show them the pathway, help them manage their time and make sure that you give them opportunity to get discovered and then all the resources they need. So if they need the tools, like they need to research colleges and find coaches contact info and get profile views and followers and all that, get them a platform, multiple if you can, or at least get them some free profiles. Make sure that you take them to some events so they can meet some coaches and possibly if they go to camps and stuff, they can train with them. And then, you know, if they have those skill sets um then encourage them to continue that and the things that they're weaker in you know help them build those skills right it's so so important i mean like i think the parents because they're so involved in the fact that you know you're taking a 15 16 17 18 year old kid um and i say kid because like we've all been there who you know is not 100 percent you know it's not fully on their own two feet you know still living at home and all that stuff and now you're talking about recruitment where it's there's money involved and there's college and this big step that they just cope parents just want to take over everything and protect their kid but you're not protecting them you're you're hurting them by not allowing them to go through it and allowing them to i wouldn't say make mistakes but learn 
you know, cause they're like, like I say this wholeheartedly and I joke with coaches all the time is that there's a lot of parents out there that are scared that their child is going to screw something up in the recruitment process. You can't really screw it up. You can throw your middle finger up and tell them to go home. That's the way you can screw it up. Aside from that, you can say whatever you want to say, you know, and it's not going to jeopardize your thing. Like if you say, oh, I'm looking to do this, you know, I want to win the championship, you know, coach is going to deal with it. You know, okay, well at this school, we don't, you know, we do it like this or we do it like that, or we're offering this and right. we'll teach you. Like every single coach is there to help. They're there to work with young student athletes and help them not only develop their skills, but give them a great student athlete experience. Like they want to, you know, I watch coaches retire and you know, the ceremonies and the, the videos that are created, it just shows how much of an impact they had on their athletes outside of just recruitment and having them play their sport. Their impact is I help so-and-so get a job here. I help this kid, you know, build the confidence they needed and I watch them develop and I taught them life skills and all this stuff. It's important. Yeah. It's a lot of good takeaways there. Um, I think that like one of the important takeaways that you mentioned, Tarek, um, is finding the time, right? So like you said, a lot of them say, I don't have time. They don't have time. There's always time. And if you want to go to the next level, you have to find that time because you're going to realize this once you get to college. Again, former student athletes, me and you, Tarek, we, we went to the same school for a couple of years. We, we saw how it was. You'll have morning, um, you know, training, you'll have classes, then you'll have afternoon practice and then, you know, cafeteria, go eat. And then, you know, you have this little bit of time to either, you know, you might have to take away some social life, right? So it's like, okay, so do I go hang out with my friends, go play PlayStation or, you know, do I study for this exam I have in the morning? Cause you know, it's the same thing. You know, like, like you're going to have to set your priorities, right? And you know, if you want to get to the next level, if you want to get good grades, if you want to be a good athlete, you either stay longer after practice and keep training or you go study for your exam the next day. It's, it's, it's the only way. Or you can do neither of them and go play PlayStation for three hours and then wake up and, you know, fail a test and, you know, didn't get that extra training and that you could have got the day before. So, yeah, the reality sits in it, real it quickly, like you said, and, and, uh, you know, there's sometimes you're rehabbing, like then you have less time, you know, cause then you have to go. I, when I hurt my shoulder, I was rehabbing then after practice and everything icing. And then sometimes there's conditioning, additional conditioning that needs to be done. And then there's travel and you're away from school and some coaches don't give a crap. I mean, sorry, some professors don't give a crap if you're an athlete. So there's some professors that don't like athletes and kind of say tough luck. You got to get your assignment in. Like, I don't care that you're going away for five days on a on a, you know, uh, a trip with your team. Yeah. So, you know, what, one thing that I can say though, that I think, you know, parents need to let go again is, is that I learned very quickly after my first semester, if you remember, John, I wasn't the most disciplined is like, I realized that I cannot sleep half the day, not go to classes, just train a little bit and expect to get good results and pass right. school. Like I got straight C's my first semester and I don't even know how I got straight C's. I got a 2.0, which is exactly what I needed um, to stay eligible and to come back to school for my second semester. But it was like the biggest wake up call and that's okay. Like, I remember, I remember when coach had that talk with us, you know, in January, I remember you guys are all laughing because he's looking at me basically because I'm the freshman coming in and, you know, I, he, he was like, you guys need to get your act together. And it was mainly me that needed to get my acts together. But what I did was I learned from that experience. And right. if people protected me, then I wouldn't have never gone through that to understand what it actually will take to get out of the hole. And so I changed that next semester. I started finding the right people to study with. I stopped sleeping in so much. Nice one, John. Study. You weren't one of them, by the way. Oh. Um, I, I, I started taking the training seriously, 
uh, although I always kind of took it a little seriously, but I took it more seriously. I was more, I, I learned how to manage my time. And I think that helps me tre tremendously as I got into the business world. Yeah. You understand how much time certain things take and what's important and what's unimportant. So um, that's, that's a big topic. Um, next one is college coaches role slash job. And we're saying that because it's important as an athlete and the family to understand what the coach is doing and what their role is in the process, as well as it's their job, right? Right. So um, they're getting paid for it and they have to put up a good team and they have to meet their requirements set out by their athletic department and their school to make sure that they uphold um, their job. So if you understand the coach's part, then you're going to be in a much better position to, you know, go through the process successfully. Right. You know how they operate and you can understand where they're coming from. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, college coaches uh, do a great job. Um, you know, uh, they what do they do. Job. Sorry. They do an amazing job. Yeah. It's a tough job. It's a tough job and and you know a lot of them if not all of them you know they're they're ready to go so you know they're very organized they know their finances or what their school can offer so you know if you're looking for a scholarship opportunities um you know they usually know right off the bat how much finances they have or what budget they have to work with within that year um you know they always try to find the best fit um athletes for their team of course again going back to you know you're going to be there for four years college coaches are also bringing in kids that are going to be with them for four years it's like a family you know you're gonna you're gonna see your coach more than you see your family you know more than you see your mom and dad uh you know so it's it's almost like your first family at times uh you know you see them every single day you travel with them uh you know all that aspect, um, you know, they they always engage and stay in contact with the student athletes prior to, you know, recruiting them. Uh, this is also a big part of their job. Of course, they need to show interest. Again, it goes two way street again. It can't just be, you know, the student athlete showing interest and none from the coach. And then the coach is going to still try to go after that uh, student athlete because they probably chose another school at that point. If there's, you know, no interest coming from the coach's side, which usually isn't the case um so yeah and then once the process is in motion it's just getting to know the student athlete um you know getting to know them better letting them know about the admissions process letting them know about the school and how they would fit in other than just the sports program what other things like their major what they're studying in what type of departments what type of buildings they have regarding that major that they're in so there's just so much more to it that coaches um you know educate student athletes on oh yeah yeah, they're they're scouting you, and, and there's admission uh, admission timelines as well, right? So I mean, if you're a senior and you know you're choosing narrowing down your schools, there's you know especially with some of these like D three schools as we see, you know, there's a lot of strict timelines, and you know they got to yeah. make these timelines. If not, then it's kind of like admissions first, then the sport. So yeah, yeah, they a lot have of information. They have a lot of yeah, they have a lot of work to do, and. Uh, they're scouting players and they're trying to give everybody a chance, you know, to, to see what they have. So they make the right choices as well. And right. it's important to also understand that their job is to, you know, keep everybody happy as much as they can. They're going to show a lot of interest um, to the players that they're, that they're putting on their, you know, short list to potentially recruit. So you have to also understand that, you know, it's their job to get, you know, as many athletes interested in the university as possible. And that whether they recruit you or not, they want to, they're going to show everybody a lot of love and vice versa. You know, athletes should be showing coaches love. I mean, it's just the way it works, right? Partially it is a business in that sense. So, you know, uh, you have to understand that they have to then select players and you may or may not get selected, but, um, you know, they're, they're going to educate and try to find, yeah, they, they will ultimately want to find the best athletes that are going to fit in really well with their team. And right. if you cooperate with them, then you help them do a better job, which helps you find the right fit. So you kind of have to, it's kind of like a help me help you situation. Right. Um, but they have a role too, and they have to field the best team that they think is right. 
And, uh, you know, as John, you always say, like, you got to start early so that you can build those relationships and communicate with them often, because if you're not, then you're not really helping them do their job. And exactly. Their and you got to do your job as well. Ask, ask questions. You know, you, I hear it all the time. I wonder if, I wonder if there's always, people are always wondering, stop wondering, ask the question. I wonder if, there, I wonder if they have a football team at the school. I wonder if there's a football field on campus. I wonder if there's, you know, ask the questions if, if that's. I wonder if they have a certain alumni, ask questions. Yeah. Right? You got to ask to get answers. Don't, don't wonder and then find out and then realize, oh, well, you know, this is not what I wanted. So ask questions early, you know, write down a list of questions of your interests and, you know, help you yeah. uh, narrow down your choices. Yeah, the coaches can only do so much, right? Like, I mean, it is their, they're going to go through their spiel. And, you know, initially when, like, people should understand how it works too. With most coaches, it's going to be some form of online connection. And then whether it's you initiating or them, they're going to want to jump on a call with you and, and tell you more about the school and give you, you know, an overview. But then, yeah, they, they can't read your mind. They don't know all the nitty gritty things that are on your list. Like, I think to help the coaches you know, do a better, like to allow them to do a, a good job and play their role, you have to, as the athlete, have to give them substance there. Like, it'd be great if you would say, hey, I've, you know, these are the 10 questions I, I'm asking coaches that are really important to me. Do you right. think you could answer these questions for me, either an email, over the phone call, whatever, text message, whatever it is. So help them do that, do, do a better job in, in playing that role because they're there for you. They just can't, um, you know, they're just not going to go to the point where they're going to try to pull teeth. Right. So like, yeah. um, and, but, but I think a lot of coaches do try. And even if they don't come off that way, they're there. I, I, you know, they're there to help you. They're there to find out if you're a good fit or not. And if you're not, I think most coaches are going to be very honest with you. And at that point you move on and you there's know, no surprises either. Like, um, you know, I did some pretty good research myself before I went on my recruiting trips Yeah, and, you know, I had my questions, I asked my questions. So for example, like when I went to New Mexico on my recruiting trip, I wasn't, I wasn't surprised other than, you know, the climate change and stuff in the mountains. But other than that, like I didn't have any surprises. I already knew like kind of what the campus looked like, what the dorms looked like, you know, I asked for, you know, my coach at the time, sent me some pictures, uh, obviously went on their website and, you know, there just weren't any surprises. It was just, you know, going through the motion and, you know, getting a feel for it. Yeah. Yeah. It's have to um, make sure that you just stay, you know, you got to give it a, your all and it's uncomfortable at times. I think that's the challenge with some of the athletes and the parents is, you know, it's, that's the challenge of, of getting out of the comfort zone. But as soon as you do, and you do it with a couple of coaches, it gets easier and easier and you end up making a good decision. So exactly. we, we wanted to give you guys this episode of how it really works to really understand like their, the, the truths about what's going on and how you can actually benefit from doing this. Now you have to, you have to make it happen. You got to go and make it happen. If you really want to be a student athlete, then you're going to have to be in uncomfortable situations. You're going to have to put in the at work. So, it's, it's, if you, you know, we've broken it down. I think like if you do all this stuff and you know, it, it isn't that difficult, but if you don't do it and you try to give excuses and stuff, then it's going to be a, a big challenge down there. Right. So, all right, well, that's it for me. You have anything else to add, John, before we, I'm good. I think we covered a lot of things. Okay. Awesome. Yep. So guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode we'll come back at you with episode seven to be determined we got a whole laundry list of great content that we can pump out so i'm excited to keep going with this and um you know we'll see you guys next time happy recruiting <laughs>